Hello, my name is Donna Coxon. I'm a senior solution architect with ANS, and today I'm going to walk you through the ANS solution for complex case and outbreak management, which is based on Dynamics 365 customer service. In the current climate, we understand that local authorities need to find a way of managing complex cases which are being passed to them from the CTAS National Contact Centre. So the National Track and Trace app will capture and identify cases. And the understanding is then that that data will be passed to local authorities to create a local response. So those cases will be passed to local authorities on a daily basis, probably in a spreadsheet CSV format. So what local authorities are able to do is to take that data, import it into Dynamics 365 and use the complex case management capability to triage the case, to action the case and to monitor the cases at a regional level. So let's take a look at what the solution looks like. When I first come into the solution, I can see all of the active cases that are um, assigned to me. And what will happen is when you import the cases from the CSV file, we can set up auto routing rules to make sure that the cases go to a particular queue or to a particular user. So you can have a team of people who are monitoring a queue or monitoring a list of cases and they can then initiate the triage of those cases. So here I can see a list of my active cases. OK, so let's have a look at the information that's captured in this case. So the first thing we see when we come into the case form is that we have a process bar along the top. So this is the business process for managing a complex case. So the first stage of the process is the triage. So identifying what the case relates to and how we're going to triage it and assign it. The next stage of the process is to actually action or create the activities that need to be completed in order to um, address the case. And then we've got the monitor stage where we're really monitoring the progress of the case before it can be completed. Over here on the left hand side, we can see the key information that's been captured. So this would be the information that was included in the CSV file that was passed to us from the CTAS National Contact Centre. So what we can see is probably some kind of ID record, maybe the CTAS ID. We've got a case title, so here we can see that a bank employee is tested positive. Here we can see where that bank employee worked and um, what the name of the setting is. We've then got a subject field and this effectively allows you to triage or categorise a case um, in a more personal way. So what you can do here is you can personalise this field and add additional categorizations or ways of grouping your cases. We've then got the ability to capture an action plan a key contact and we can also see the origin of the case so um, how was this captured so that's the information we've got at the moment so we can see that this happened at NatWest Bank in Fleet what we can do is drill down onto that and look at the information that we hold about NatWest so here I can see the key information about NatWest I can see cases associated to that particular company and up here in the contact screen I'd be able to see any of the contacts that we know about already who work there. Returning to the case, it's probably at this point then, so as we're triaging this, we want to capture the case type. So what kind of case is this? What's the priority? Um, and what additional categorization do we want to capture? So once we've captured those key things, we can now move it on to the action phase. So I'm going to move it on to the action phase. And what we can do here, you'll see, is we can actually associate an action plan. Now, effectively, an action plan is a set of predefined activities and tasks based on the category of a case. So, for example, you can see that I've got an action plan for a school where there's a multi-year infection. I've got an action plan for um, a school where it's just a single year that's been infected. Um, I've also got an action plan in here for a care home. But what you can do is you can build out these action plans to suit the different scenarios that you think you're going to encounter. And each of those action plans will contain a predefined set of tasks and activities. So let's look at the workplace action plan. So here we can say that there's been an outbreak within a workplace because this is um, an outbreak within, an, within a bank. So now I'll select the action plan and save my case. And what I should see now, if I start to refresh the actions grid over on the right hand side, is that a number of actions are being created. There we go. So by updating the action plan against my case, I've automatically created a number of actions. And we can see here that the actions are ordered sequentially. So this is the order in which they need to be completed. 
um, the first thing to do is to shut down the site, then to create a staff email notification, and then to interview all the staff. Now, as part of the solution setup, we'll create a couple of action plans for you. But what we will then do is teach you how to create your own action plans. So you'll be able to build out as many different action plans as you need based on all the different scenarios that you might encounter. So now we've we've created our case, we've triaged our case, and we've created our action plan. The other thing you can do within the solution is some basic contact tracing. So what you may want to do is start identifying the contacts within the bank um, and capturing their details. So what we can do is go into the contact tracing screen and just down at the bottom here, I can create a new contact trace. So at this point, what we might be doing is actually calling, calling the bank, identifying who the contacts are and then speaking to those contacts individually. So here I've identified that there is someone called Jane Smith who works at the bank. I've captured her details. I can flag here whether she's a vulnerable citizen or not. If I change that to a yes, it will ask me to capture um, what category she falls into. So I'm going to say she's vulnerable because she's, um, she's pregnant. We can also do a quick symptom check while we're speaking to her as well. So does she have a high temperature? Um, does she have a cough and is she symptomatic? So based on those results, we would probably advise her to have a test. So we want to indicate that we've advised her to have a test and to come back to us as soon as she has a test result. So at the moment, um, we don't have a test result, but we can update that later. So let's save that contact record. So now we can see we've got one contact trace against this outbreak at NatWest, um, one who's symptomatic, um, one who's not yet been tested. We may then go on to speak to another one of her colleagues within the bank. So we'll create a new contact trace. So we've quickly captured David's details here. Now we can identify that he's not vulnerable. Um, he doesn't have a high temperature. He has no cough. He's not symptomatic currently. So we're going to advise that he has a test anyway, because he's been in contact with Jane Smith, who is symptomatic. Um, and again, we'll just update the test result to say that he's not been tested yet. So going back to our contact tracing screen, we can now see that we have got um, two contact traces. One is symptomatic, one isn't. Neither of them have been tested yet, so we're waiting upon their test results. Let's go and have a look at one of those contact traces. So if we drill down into that record, now we can see the information here behind that contact trace. So this is the contact trace for Jane Smith. So I'm just going to um, just give it a, a name. So this is Jane Smith, we'll say June 2020. Um, we've got the information that we captured earlier. So we've identified that she's pregnant, she has a high temperature and she's symptomatic. We've advised her to take a test, but we haven't yet received the test results. She's not yet been tested. So what it might be important here is for us to now start capturing some additional movements that Jane has made. So where else has she been? And let's capture that information. So for example, Jane has told us that before she realised she needed to self-isolate for 14 days, she went to Sainsbury's to do some shopping. So I'm capturing the information about that particular supermarket. And now that I've captured the location of that movement, I want to capture the date. And she went there first thing this morning. Now we can save that. So now I can see that I have someone who has high temperature, who is symptomatic, who is waiting for a test. But we've now also captured the other places that she's been to. So if we start to register cases in relation to that location. Again, we can see the relationships between all those locations and all the places that Jane Smith has been before she began to self-isolate. So we've captured the case, we've identified an action plan, we've also done some basic contact tracing to identify who was in the branch, what condition they're in currently, and identified any boundary movements they've made. Um, and then what we can also do is we can then start to update these actions. So these actions will now be assigned out to whoever needs to complete them. They can actually come in and update the information here. So we can then move through the different actions, making sure that they get completed and that all of the work on that case um, is followed through. And then ultimately, once all of those actions have been completed, we can actually finish that case and it will mark that case as complete. So hopefully you found that useful. That was a quick overview of the capability available within the complex case and outbreak management solution from ANS. Hopefully you can see that that gives you the ability to route tasks based on skills and geographical location, 
to get visibility of your complex cases and to identify all of the interdependencies through some basic contact tracing to track boundary movements um, and start to see the progress and the actions as they're happening across your region. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that's been useful to you. If you would like more information about this, then please don't hesitate to reach out to us at ANS. We would be delighted to help you. Thanks very much. Bye.